Okay, we're back live in Las Vegas at Gen 8. We're getting down to the final stretch here. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com, and this is theCUBE where we go out and talk to the people about the impact of technology at the event here at HP in Las Vegas. And uh, we're here with uh, Jeff Carlat, Director of Marketing, Industry Standard Servers and Software. There's a little software in there. You got gonna, it. Can't wait to talk about that. And EJ Bodner, Director of Portfolio Marketing Technology Services. Portfolio. So welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for uh, coming in. So we were just talking to uh, Jim Gante, who's all full of excitement. Oh, yeah. And he's been on theCUBE a number of times, but I've never seen him that excited. <laughs> so uh, Gen 8, big product launch here. So tell us what's your an guy's angle here, and let's yeah. go deep on it. So a lot of passion in the air. A lot of passion in the air. I've been in the industry standard server side of uh, uh, Compaq and now HP for 14 years, and I've never seen an announcement uh, this this significant as we are really driving innovation and automation into the servers themselves. And what's important for myself and I think EJ is, um, we're really driving uh, proactive service and support. Uh, for the first time, I think we're really making this, establishing the server management and the service and support experience to be converging into one. So it's really exciting from my standpoint. I agree, what we're talking about is the convergence of servers and services. So you heard about today Insight Online, the information um, that, that we have available to us, to our customers, to our channel partners, taking that information, uh, which we believe come from the, the most intelligent servers, most self-sufficient servers in the world, pairing that with what we believe are the smartest support and service experts and processes in the world, and automating the support experience. And that results in increased system uptime, increased performance, uh, so we're very excited about yep. it as well. We can actually, uh, based on our uh, um, support automation and the intelligence in the servers, uh, we can reduce the total time to problem resolution by 66%. Um, so um, it's just a great step forward in really freeing up time for IT administrators uh, and for partners. Yeah, now we were talking earlier and I was kind of making the reference and I, I kind of was joking but I wasn't joking that when you have groundbreaking innovation like this, really built from the ground up where service technicians, hardware engineers were involved in identifying the biggest problem on the market which is power and cooling and operational costs. Yeah. You know, and flipping that from 70-30 to back around the mm -hmm. other way will create a lot of innovation and enable great solutions. So I was kind of just throwing out the idea like revolutionary, it's like what the iPhone did for the phone and music business complete architectural change, change the user experience, how they use their finger and the yeah. touch screen and iTunes and App Store. And there's a big trickle effect around behind the Apple iPhone. Apple mm -hmm. iPhone. So I made the comment because Larry Ellison said at Oracle Open World that he wants to be the iPhone for the data center. Mm -hmm. And so you guys have a lot of experience in using this multi, being a multi-vendor yeah. um, multi company. Yeah. HP's heritage, in fact, is multi-vendor which is a challenge on the services side, right? Mm -hmm. So the question coming back to, to my analogy is, if the Gen 8 architecture is going to really change the customer experience from operational economics down to some of the, the power issues and overall serviceability, mm -hmm. what is going to be the side effect of that? What is that going to enable the customers? Sure. So I'll take a sure. crack at that, Jeff, if that's okay. So we believe and we're focused from a services perspective on a superior customer experience. Uh, that's what our focus is. And we're in the enviable position that we are the industry leading, industry standard server vendor in the world. We're the largest IT support organization in the world. So we were able to draw from that experience, that customer insight, that customer input, to, to develop this next generation of, of products and services. So as far as what will be the end result, we're able to take away um, the focus on some of the administrative tasks that now our customers have to deal with and allow them to free up those hours, those days in fact, you heard 30 days quoted today earlier, and focus those on innovating more strategic projects that can help differentiate our clients and our customers from their competition. So again, taking the shift off administrative tasks, automating a lot of the support experience, and letting them focus on more strategic tasks. Yeah, I would even add to that, um, in today's IT infrastructure management, you know, when problems do occur, you know, the laws of physics, um, that something will go wrong, and power supply, whatever, that now, IT administrators spend more time than they need to looking through log files, uh, uh, working through level one support. Uh, through the support automation and, and delivering that through Inside Online, we have the ability of really seamlessly linking that underlying telemetry, you know, uh, that's being uh, um, diagnostic information, over 1,600 parameters being, being uh, 
uh, looked at within the servers. That can be sent through and be utilized through our uh, support and services organization to automatically understand what the problem is. In fact, uh, we can actually work with the, the, the customer to automatically create, create a case, support case, and send a replacement part uh, even before the customer really needs to interact a lot uh, on a human yeah. standpoint. And just to add to that, if I may, so certainly a, a very beneficial impact on our customers, but we also work with our authorized support partners who also can have access to that data, that information, so they can provide a higher level of service, but also they can use that data to engage in more consultative sales and, and discussions with their customers. So it really is a... Um, uh, uh, it's a plus, obviously, for HP. We can better service our customers. Our clients receive that better level of service, and our partners can also engage and, and benefit from it. We were joking with Dave Donatelli and, and uh, Dave Vellante, co-host, said, you know, what, what scares you? These keynotes? He's like, no, what scares me is execution, right? Okay. So the vision here is, and the story is fantastic, execution in the services business requires a lot of coordination. So the question I have is, talk about the automation side, because one of the key messages in this uh, announcement is the uh, automating away not only um, machine-based activity within mm -hmm. the sensors and the technology, but the human part, right? Mm -hmm. So talk about what you guys are doing to make that work. I mean, you have uh, some portals, you got a channel to deal with. There's a lot of moving parts here. Yeah. What, what's the key to that? Yeah. Certainly yeah. is. So, oh, oh. so absolutely, execution is key. And again, we have a history of drawing uh, from superior execution that we'll continue to, to leverage and, and build upon. So as far as automating and the benefit there, um, Insight Online is a great tool. It gives us great insight, great data. But the real breakthrough and benefit there is when we combine it with Insight Remote Support, which is tied to our very smart people experts, but also the support processes. So we're able to automate a lot of the activities um, that that are required in that type of environment. Jeff talked about being able to send out a replacement part before it's needed. So um, utilizing data, we can open a case um, and send out a replacement part before the part fails. It can be replaced uh, proactively, and that's why we call it proactive services. So we automate a lot of those tasks that would take time and people's attention and, and effort and automate those activities. And, and let's even go one step further. Let's, let's talk about proactive service offerings that we offer. By using this intelligence uh, in the servers, the experts in HP services or our mm -hmm. partners can use that information to provide ongoing optimization suggestions to improve performance and to increase uptime before problems actually occur. Do the customers like freak out and go, come on guys, are you kidding me? Does you really can do that? I mean seriously, take, take me through a, a customer scenarios where, you know, they do yeah. they fall out of their chair? I mean, what are, I mean, what's the customer reaction mm -hmm. like? Yeah. I mean, because the service business is really been hard. No one's really cracked that nut of configuration management, mm -hmm. end to end. Not just, you know, here and there you've seen some solutions, but what's the customer reaction? I mean, are they falling out of their chair? Are they signing up in droves? What's the uh, you know, EJ? Yeah. Sure. You know, so I'll, I mean, it's it's sort tell of us some, tell us some it's data. It's a combination like. Wow, you've listened. This is something that I'm very interested in. It is a, it is a, it is a challenge. But also there's a, a belief and a credibility in HP that we can deliver that because we've worked with them, we have the credibility, and they say, okay, show it to me. Um, and, and absolutely, it's a very And what do you show them? You show them the inside portal? Do you show them the can, analytics? Yeah. What are they? All of the above. Yeah, a great example. Uh, talk to customers all the time around managing their contract and warranty statuses. You know, they spend so much time and, and, and labor tracking the assets. Where is it in the data center? What's the current status of this contract, right? And they're doing this whether it be by pieces of paper. Yeah, running the green them. light on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly on. Right. Yeah. And, or, or through Excel spreadsheets. Through support automation and inside online, this information is there at your fingertips. So we can run reports. You actually get warnings of things that will expire in 30 days and 60 days. So it just provides huge advantage. And yes, IT administrators are giddy when I talk to them and the fact that we can save labor, save their time, they can go do something more important or manage more servers, CIOs, um, see the benefits of less time spent on that labor. Because again, the majority of the IT budget is spent on the labor and just keeping things afloat. Yeah. yeah, and it's a trickle-down kind of effect, uh, to quote kind of you know voodoo economics from Ronald Reagan, but if someone goes with you guys on this, what's the trickle-down benefits? Because the guy in the trench is the guy who really wins here. I mean, you're talking about the day-to-day -day operations of a business mm -hmm. where failure's not an option, there's unplanned, unplanned downtime and planned downtime. Right. What are some of the things that are happening in the trench to the person mm -hmm. and to the environment? 
Can you guys quote any like use case data? Or? Sure, from a, from a person, say a, an administrative perspective, their time is freed up to then go focus on more innovative tasks, more strategic tasks. From a CIO perspective, he or she will see the financial benefit, increased uptime, increased performance, which reflects well on that person and the organization. Um, higher service levels for their customers. So there's benefit across the board from the administrator, the CIO, to the overall company, and to our customers' customers as well. Yeah. Yeah, our partners and the benefit to our partners' True. ability of really be able to deepen their relationship with their customers. My final question to you guys is obviously an exciting announcement. What are you guys excited about going forward? And you know, yeah. give me that Gantier kind of uh, so, emotion. Next twelve months, fourteen right. months, twenty-four here's, months. What's going to be really radically changing? What's going to be this revolution? Here's, I think. This is the beginning of an experience around the convergence of server management and mm -hmm. support and services. With Inside Online, it creates a palette, a palette for me to paint more innovation, more value-added mm -hmm. services. Imagine a time in the future when we have this Inside Online portal and you can actually bring in uh, VMware, Microsoft applications. You can bring in other performance data and telemetry. You can uh, monitor and manage directly from there. You can update firmware. You can do all kinds of things. I think this is the creation point for even more innovation that's going to drive even more benefits for our, our, our customers and our partners in the future. So that's a collision course then on this whole DevOps trend. You've been following DevOps, the whole debate about developer operations, mm -hmm. a big developer framework around being more creative with real-time and agile programming mm -hmm. to developer applications. Mm -hmm. You guys seeing that? Uh, I'm not an not area that, that I Not in the services area? On. Okay, EJ, what are you excited yeah. about? So I think we're at an inflection point, truly, where we're changing the support and service experience from reactionary to, to proactive. And we're able to, therefore, help our customers and our clients differentiate themselves and provide a better, better experience for them um, that differentiates them. So truly, it's an inflection point that we're changing the industry, I believe. Well, one more follow-up question, because I can never ask the last question. I have one on my mind, because this is, this is another good one. Um, the, the services business is changing, you know, from the big old deployments of the, you know, the big software plays and big iron, mini computers. But we're kind of coming back with cloud to so that kind of client-server model which has been talked about, new stacks and new frameworks. What do you guys see as the biggest challenges for the services industry uh, for the next, uh, what's on the agenda of the next, well, top three issues that are, are the most topical and most relevant that people should be talking about or are talking about or, you know, what are the top three things? I mean, services is changing. There's sure. the notion of servicing, mm -hmm. there's services that can be offered, mm -hmm. and then there's like cloud services. So like this is changing the economics and all value chains. So what do you guys see as the big picture? Top three things to, uh, that's being disrupted. Sure, so you can look at a number of surveys that say what are top of mind with CIOs, for example. As I talk to, to clients and we talk to clients, um, cloud is a big big challenge for them. How do they embrace the cloud? How do they take advantage of the cloud? How do they optimize it? Virtualization, um, convergence, these are all things that our clients and our customers and our partners are working with HP on to help them uh, address within their environments. So, um, you know, I. You heard it earlier today. A lot of it is about choice. And let me go back to the partner angle. So our clients are saying, we want choice. We want an optimal support experience. Uh, we want to work with HP. Uh, but oftentimes, we want to work with a local partner who understands our environment, our stakeholders, and how IT enables our business. So those are some of the top of mind things as we talk to CIOs and our clients that they're saying, HP, help us with, work with us. Um, okay. okay. EJ, Jeff, thanks so much. We love the services angle. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Great job. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll much. be right back in one minute with our next guest.